Here's the motorcycle track day preparation checklist before you leave the grid on that first lap of your next event. The first thing you need is the motorcycle and it needs to be safely secured in a trailer. So if you don't know how to do that, I've got another video in the description listed below that'll show you how to do that properly. No matter what the event is, you wanna make real sure that your bike is in solid working condition. And that means that things like brakes are working and solid and you can trust them. That means that you bleed them if you have to, if they're a little bit spongy and you make sure your levers are all adjusted properly. It means that your engine is running smoothly. You're not leaving clouds of smoke behind you on <laughs> your exhaust pipe. There's no leaks such as fuel, antifreeze, oil, any of those things are gonna be really bad for the surface and you're gonna have a lot of other participants really mad at you if you ruin that surface and require a cleanup delay. Beyond those basics, each event is gonna vary in how much bike preparation work you're gonna to have to do. And the only way you're gonna know is to contact them and get a copy of the rule book or the specs or whatever their rules are for participation. Every event is gonna have a tech check and that basically means you're gonna pull your bike up they're gonna inspect it for whatever their regulations are. They're probably gonna look at your tires. They're probably gonna feel your brakes, make sure your clutch adjustment is right, looking for leaks, basic functional items. In general, any event is gonna require that you tape up any lens glass-like material. As you can see, I've already installed a race body on this one so I don't have to tape anything. But prior to this installation, I always had to tape both headlights, the tail light, the blinkers front and back, if I left them on, take the mirrors off, make sure there's nothing. What they really wanna do is minimize the chance that something is going to shatter when the bike falls over and have a bunch of pieces everywhere. Research your tire pressure for the event you're doing. If you're gonna do a drag race, that's gonna be a whole lot different than something like a Texas Mile, and that's gonna be different than uh, Circuit of the Americas, and all of them will probably be a little bit different than what you ride on the streets. Make sure that your tires are solid, they're not a bunch of weather cracks everywhere, that the tread is good, unless they are a slick tire, then you don't have to worry about tread, of course. Something like the Texas Mile or more official track racing is gonna have a whole lot more preparation tasks. There's probably gonna be things like safety wiring your oil drain plug, like safety wiring your oil filter, like safety wiring pinch bolts or rear axle nut, anything that they don't wanna come loose and fall off during the event. I have multiple videos on Texas mile preparation if you wanna watch those, but for most kind of track day events, the main thing is have lenses taped up, mirrors off, everything safely working, brakes, good tires, correct pressure, and that's probably gonna be the extent of it. But again, always default to getting the actual rules from the event and following those. You might wanna bring a few basic tools and rags, for just a track day at Coda, I didn't bring many tools. I have some zip ties with the needle nose and the dikes for really basically just securing my GoPro cameras to the bike. Always a handy thing to have just in case you need it. I've got the plexus for the shield and the microfibers over with the cameras. I do have a nozzle and a tire pressure gauge the screwdriver is for tightening the brackets on the GoPro. And then I brought one little end wrench for the master cylinder bleeder valve, just in case I'd need to pop a little air out of there. And then some simple green and rags is always good to have because if you have to do anything, your hands are going to get dirty. Again, for something like the Texas Mile, if you've watched those videos, you can see that there's a whole lot more stuff I take along because I'm prepared at that one to have to switch sprockets, which means tightening and loosening the chain or even adding or subtracting links. But for a basic track day, this is all I used. The next thing is your gear, suit, helmet, gloves, boots. With the weather being only in the 40s in the morning, I'm gonna start the day wearing the cold weather insulated Under Armour top bottom and some insulated warmer Danazy socks. Now, as the sun comes out, this is all gonna get a little bit too warm and I'll switch to the other. Although this may look like something you'd find at the Neverland Ranch Estate Sale, it's actually super stretchy. It's gonna be just a little bit warmer than normal Under Armour gear, but not near as warm as what the thermal stuff is. 
So I've got those and then I've got just some normal riding socks. It may seem like a lot of effort to bring both sets like this, but I promise you being comfortable, especially when you have a 30, 40 degree swing in temperatures during the day, makes a lot of difference. And you want to be comfortable while you're riding. Now, some of you may have a two piece suit that's got the jacket and the pants separately. Some events will allow that. A lot of them are probably gonna require that they're leather though. This particular two piece is actually a cooler suit, more breathable, so it's a textile. I don't think a textile is gonna fly at most events. So the best bet is your one piece leathers. Some zip together two piece leathers might be okay. If you have any question, again, check the rules because you don't wanna get all the way to the event and realize they won't let you on the track. A lot of places do rent leathers for the day, but again, just check in advance and make sure you're covered so you don't waste a day. In addition to the leathers, you're gonna need a good helmet. A lot of them will require a Snell rating, which will have the little sticker on the inside. Just because it's a name brand does not mean it's Snell rated. I had a showy that had the, the flip down sun visor inside and that flip down sun visor made it non-Snell rated. Now it protected my head when I killed the deer with the Aprilia, but it's just something that may not be accepted on certain events. You also want a good set of boots and a good set of gloves. All this stuff is for your protection to keep you in one piece if you happen to go down. Leathers and riding boots are great for the track, but they are not ideal for walking around for a full day. So it's always best to bring something extra to wear in between shots on your brakes. I brought along some sneakers I'll be wearing on the way to the event. I've also got some shorts to wear over the Under Armour, so I'm not showing off the twig and the giggleberries, especially in 40 some degrees where I'll be hung like a Ken doll. And then again, because it's cold, gotta have a Rammstein hoodie for something like this. The most important component is actually you as the rider. You wanna be in good health and good mental place before you get on that track so that you're safe for yourself and for the people around you. You're gonna be going at high speeds. You've gotta have good focus, good reactions. You have to feel good. You have to be thinking clearly and really paying attention because at those speeds, things happen really fast and you have to be able to react. So if you stayed up all night worrying about why that stripper hasn't called you back, you probably shouldn't be out there on the track. Furthermore, if you think the stripper actually liked you and not just your money, you probably shouldn't be operating vehicles in the first place. So hopefully you got good sleep the night before. Hopefully you didn't go out and try the Scorpion Chili at the local Tex-Mex joint for the first time last night. Hopefully you've stretched, you're limber, you're relaxed, you're in a good place mentally, you're focused, and you're able to pay attention and have a great day on that track. I haven't moved these to the car yet because I'm not leaving until the morning, but these are some of the things I take for food. Now, depending on what your event is, they may actually have food served there. For example, Circuit of the Americas has uh, lunch served available for purchase around the lunchtime. Um, but however, I like to keep some stuff with me for as I get hungry throughout the day, also for health reasons. So I bring some collagen or protein to mix up something that will dissolve in water easily. And I also bring some BCAAs. These have electrolytes built into them. And for me being on a keto diet and sweating a lot on the track, electrolytes are really important. So make sure you've got something to replenish those. Uh, these are also a low sugar option as opposed to some of the other sports drinks. These are a little bit higher carb, but I do bring some of these as well. It's really hard to find a good protein bar that doesn't have much for carbs. So I kind of bring that as a snack and as a option in case I need something quick. Almonds are also a healthy snack and they have a lot of salt on them. So again, helps keep the electrolytes good. I also bring some cheese, sausage, and a knife to cut the sausage. And then the last and biggest thing is water. Now again, your event may have water provided, but it's always good to have some of your own. And I'll bring this with a shaker bottle so that I can make my own protein and BCA drinks throughout the day. The other thing I pack separately are the electronics and little accessories. So I use a microfiber cloth to wrap around the cameras to protect their lenses and screens. And that's the same cloth that I'll use with the Plexus for cleaning off the helmet shield as well as the lenses here. I've got earplugs. Uh, I like the ones that are molded to the ear. They fit the best with the least discomfort. I've got extra batteries for the GoPros. 
depending on your event. Some allow you to put helmet cams, some allow you to do a dash cam or use uh, a GoPro mount already on the bike. And generally they require that you tie them on. So you'll notice that I have the zip ties included with the tools. That's so that I can secure the camera to the bike when I'm using it. Some of them will allow like a side or body cam. Every event is unique. You just have to check the rules and make sure you're complying. And because I'm a YouTube nerd, I also have a nice camera for stills as well as for video with a tripod for that so I can get some footage. Subscribe to my YouTube channel below and let's celebrate turning fuel and air into adrenaline.